Today, we're going to be talking about highlights, specifically here, how to recover your highlights in Final Cut Pro. The point is to be able to create a shot that can test the dynamic range. So there's a lot of contrast from this side of the frame to this side of the frame to this side of the frame. Let's get into Final Cut Pro and make it happen. So since this video is about overexposure anyways, I thought I would keep this consistent. All right, so coming back into Final Cut Pro, this is the frame that I wanna go with because we can see everything. So the first thing that I would usually do in this case is to go and add in a custom lot. This is just any technical lot. If you haven't seen my previous video about how to call a space transform log images, you should probably watch that. But coming back to this, I would just use one of my favorite uh, transforms, which is from Joe Famlaro, um, the neutral. And I just want to see what this is really doing in terms of the contrast areas that we have here. And then the next thing that we'll do is just bring up my scopes. I want to see exactly what is going on. Um, usually I would use the, the Luma. I just the Luma just so I can see that. Now, for me, I personally like to leave my shadows at three i don't like it when my shadows go to zero itself so i like three as my base point and i usually just set that line there so that it guides my process and in most cases if there's no information in the sky but we just want to make it less murky less milky if that's the word or maybe milky so the next thing that i would do is to come into this place and bring in a curve they provide more customized contrast control um, points than using the wheels or something like that the wheels right they, they they provide an enhancement of contrast only by setting highlight and shadow point right but with the curves you can adjust this contrast by setting control points on different points now what i would do in this case is now i've already seen if you look at this waveform everything from here is already blown out a way to check right is to use the answers just drop it in a false color you can see where the sky is at the sky is probably anywhere from like a 95 93 it's almost clipping um, you can see on the top of my my scalp my forehead here not the top of my scalp the top of my forehead here there's some clipping going on there and here as well there's also some clipping and you can see this part of my hair and my face that is backlit you can see that it is very dark in there i'm not even sure there's information but we'll find out once i've done the transform i probably would bring in just the color wheel and just touch up the saturation just a little bit just to bring some life into it right about there now what i will do is take that wheels and drag it up there's a reason why and if you watch my previous video where i use the alexa footage i explain why i'm doing this this way if i toggle that off and on you see exactly what it is doing it's adding more color depth into that image and then bring up the color the color curves this is where the magic happens, baby. Now I take that curve, I bring it to the top of everything. So I'm layering my node structure this way. Let's just say we go, we bring it down. Do we see anything? No. Um, and that's just because there's not a lot of information there anyways. So in this case, what I would do is probably bring up some of that shadow area so that you can see what's going on there. Now I'll take that middle point and bring that down, right? Um, all the while, I'm still watching my waveform. I'm doing all of this with the waveform. So if we if we toggle this off, you see where we're coming from. It is very dark on that end, which I mean might be the look that you're really going for. But if you just want to add some information in there, um, we raise that up. Probably that's a little bit too much. Maybe just bring it down a little bit more, some like so. Um, maybe bring this as well, perhaps somewhere here, like so. Um, maybe this a little bit down. Like you don't want to do it too much, right? You don't, you just want enough so that you can see the information that's there. I will probably now go into those marquee highlights. For example, the top of my head here. Um, I will choose somewhere from the 
75 range, right? In Final Cut, this will be 0, 25, 50, 75, 100. I'm holding Option key and dragging down. The reason is because I want a more refined curve adjustment. I don't want it to be too drastic. I'm starting to do that. And as you can see, I'm just eyeballing this. If I just also put that down a little bit more, and now, like if I turn that off and on, see, look at where we, we started from. Look at how sharp and how overexposed this is looking here. And then when I turn that back on, we start to see quite a number of information. I will probably then take this, the blacks, let's see, maybe just, you know, drag them just a little bit more. Um, let's see, just to make sure, right. So the color curves, um, which is tackling the, the highlight information, is the first on this. The second one is the color wheels. And then the last one is the custom LUD. This is where we started from. We started from our log image and then we converted that to Rec 7 and 9. And then we added a little bit of, you know, saturation to bring in some more colors. And then we just do some curves adjustment to be able to bring all of those things back. So you can literally see that the change is subtle but it becomes more filmic and that's the way you can recover your overexposed videos in Final Cut Pro. And I should probably mention, what camera was this shot on? By the way, I'm filming on the Sony a7 IV and I have the 24 to 70 f 2.8 on there. Tiffin Black Promise 1 8th Pro Tanley um, variable ND just so that so that we keep the 180 degree roll and I want natural motion blur. In the next video, I'm going to be using Final Cut Pro to bring back the exposure from different cameras. I'm talking ARRI, FX6, FX3, and the Sony a7 IV and the Red Komodo. If that's something you're interested in, please subscribe. Did I record? Okay, I did. I did. Bad. The shot looks badass though. <laughs> it looks like one of those like Ooh, okay, how about here? We like, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculous. It's just crazy. Um, I thought that I was gonna have it all. And now I do, I have it all. Subscribe so you can have it all too. Just like me, that's all you need. Bye.